Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to That Dragon Cancer. Now, you guys have wanted me to play this for a long time, and I've wanted to play it too. Uh, it, it's just that I have a very... I have a very close relationship with the topic of this game, and that is obviously cancer. Not me personally, uh, but my dad uh, had cancer when I was about 18 years old, and he died from it. And, and I'm not saying that's put me off from playing it, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not afraid to approach these topics. Uh, it's just that I wanted to take the time to make sure that I could approach it with the right mindset, and I could go into it with the right attitude, and, you know, I could take the time to sit down and really appreciate every nook and cranny of this game for what it is because it's less of a game and more of an experience because this is based on a true story this is about a family whose child has gone through cancer I believe their, their their son at a very young age they got sick and this is about their story of going through this experience and I know that many of you out there have probably gone through something similar to this if not you yourself have gone through something to deal with cancer because it's kind of the one big unifying thing it's the one big unifying tragedy that I think we can all relate to as opposed to just death itself but cancer is something that if you look around in your circle you have a family member or a friend who has been through this and it's an ordeal it's more than just the name of what the disease is it's about the entire way that it changes the lives of everyone involved it's a huge subject and it's something that i wanted to go into and treat with respect you know not for my sake like it, it's not about me it's not about my you know experience with it it's about treating this with respect for everyone that has ever gone through something like this so that being said uh this video is going to be a bit different it's going to be completely uncut uh this video is not monetized i didn't want to profit off of something like this and uh, i i wanted to support the developers as well uh, i want to make sure that the um the uh you know, the developers get credit for what they have done here and, and the thing that they have made. So I believe they have a tip jar. I'll be chipping into that as well. Uh, and I hope you guys can reach out to the developers and thank them for making something like this. And uh, it, it's almost everyone. It, it's critically acclaimed. It, it's good experience. And I know some of you have seen it already. And I want to go into this with like a fresh head, a fresh pair of eyes, a completely open understanding of what this life is about. Because in a game, a game is an experience where usually, typically, you have fun. Oh, that's a pleasant opening, bread on the water. Uh, you have fun and you, you're enjoying yourself and the game itself is the experience for the sake of the experience. But this is a story for the sake of a game? I don't know if that's even a correct way of putting that, but it, at its heart, it's a story and a relatable story. Because a game is about immersion. Is this told from the perspective of a duck? Uh, this game is about immersion. And just like any good story, you have to relate to the characters involved. And that means approaching it with the right mindset. So either way, I'll, I'll get into the game now. Oh, I am a duck. Why am I a duck? I'm assuming that's a family I can hear over there. Do I, oh, meh. Yeah. Oh, and also you guys may have noticed- Hello, Brad, I'm gonna get you. You guys may have noticed that I'm not in Cincinnati. Uh, I was originally gonna be in Cincinnati to do uh, a charity live stream this weekend, and I wanted to be able to do that, uh, but unfortunately I didn't have enough time. It's- it's the constant curse of my life. Um... I don't have enough time because next week I'm going to San Diego for Comic-Con, and I just didn't have enough to- Oh, sorry, you just tried to eat nothing there. Uh, I didn't have enough time to go to Cincinnati and see my family and come back, which is something that I really wanted to do, and I wanted to make this weekend about charity. But thankfully, it already is, because Revel Mode is actually doing a charity with Crisis Text Line, and I'll put this all in the description below so you can find out more about it. And I wanted to also take an opportunity in this game to, you know, raise awareness for that as well. So all that's in the- oh. So the, all that's in the description. I'll get to the game now. Well, Isaac, you gotta give him little pieces. He doesn't understand. Here you go, Joel. Here's a piece. Okay, no, you throw it. It's almost five, right? Yeah. What? But he, but he can't talk. It's true. <laughs> yeah. You always can talk. Yeah, I know. Why can't Joel? Well. <laughs> Joel got sick right after he turned one. Kind of slowed him down a little bit, buddy. Yeah. It's 
So he's just slower <laughs> than most kids. I think eventually he'll catch up. You think Joel will read? Yeah, I think Joel will read eventually. Well, Isaac, of course. He's just delayed. Because, you know. Yeah. Joel's uh, supposed to be a boy, but he's a baby. Uh, he's what? a boy. <laughs> yep, he's a boy baby. That's just about right. <laughs> you know, there's lots of things Joel isn't good at, but there's some things he is good at. What is he good at? He's eating nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'm good at making him laugh. You are good at making him laugh. What do you, how do you make him laugh? I yeah. fall down. Yeah. It's really funny when you fall down. He's good at doing what he loves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, and I want to make sure that I don't get in the way of the dialogue because that is the main story of this game is told through the dialogue. And I imagine it's going to be one of those games where you, you're along for the ride. Because, like I said before, this is based on a true story. Wawa. And you don't want to get in the way. In cups, bathtubs, and the warm, wet tongues and the cool fur of dogs. Of oh, dogs. was a daily affection. And bye byes. And blown kisses. And more. Ugh. Always more. This full list of words. So few words. Oh, am I? Oh, so am I. Ooh, hey. So pressing W doesn't go forward. Hello? Oh. No, but very soon. Do you think they know? Can they sense it? None of them know. No one ever realizes how short the time is. What? Well, I'm not sure what that was. That was interesting. I'm not sure what that was about. Did I do something wrong? And were they talking about us, the audience, or were they talking about people in their real lives? Yeah. Because I don't, I don't know how directly this translates from the true story. It might, but the only people that would know are the people that have actually gone through the experience themselves. What is that? Well, that's a little out of place. Uh, that's probably not good. Ugh. This is a black nothingness. Again, are they talking about me? Because I, I think I can understand. I mean, given time, anyone can understand anything, but that was a little bizarre. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's all I wanted to say about the game as far as the game itself goes, because it's useless to compare this to any other game. It's useless to try to put our language about video games into what this game is. It's a heavy subject you're talking about. What is hope without a word for it? Who is God? What is joy? There's something over there. Can I see that? Ooh. What are those things? Well, I think I have a feeling of what those things is. That becomes clearer later because right now I'm a little confused. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the, those brambles represent what cancer is. I mean, of course, cancer has a lot of different imagery, but and it, there's a lot of different types of cancer, but almost universally, like we all understand the concept, and it's always bad news, no matter which way you slice it. Oh man. Oh. I don't want to go back. No need to backtrack. Oh man. I imagine Ooh, that's. Man. Ooh. <laughs> Data. <laughs> huh. Oh.
I... They must be talking about me. They must be. Maybe they're making fun of my keen sense of exploration. Huh. And this is what I meant when I said I wanted to take the utmost time with this. Because I've never seen this game before. I, I, I've purposefully avoided the majority of this game and, like, what it is and what it represents and woo. That's a narrow path over there. And I- I'm going into this for completely the first time. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention in the main menu it said continue game. I only loaded it up to make sure I knew how it worked first before I actually went into the game. So. Oh, man. There's a bunch of little Joels. Again, I- I imagine this is Joel, right? Oh. What do you think, Isaac? <laughs> he just- he's- he's in a hospital, so they're taking care of him. And that's how he gets his food? His food goes through that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to touch him? Yeah. This cheek. Ready? Go. Set. Go. Yeah. Go. This is the only- this is the only casual observation I'll make about this game, as far as the aesthetic goes. Um, because I- I don't want to mock it, because it was a small team, and obviously they- they worked with what they had, and the animations are very good, but also... I wonder- oh, sorry. My bad. I wonder... If, like, the-, the making- oops, oh, I'm sorry, I was a little too early on that one. Okay, there we go. But I really wonder if, like, the design of Joel is intentional, because he- he's a little disconcerting, almost, to have this faceless person. Uh, whereas the dad has glasses, beard, and facial features and all that stuff. Um... So I wonder if that's intentional to make it a little offsetting. Uh, because I- I imagine the reason that, you know, Joel doesn't have hair is because he's gone through chemotherapy and... Oh. How fast can you go? Because Joel's been through chemotherapy, and obviously, even children, they lose their hair when they- whoa. They lose their hair. And that's just... I don't know. Again, I don't want to make too many observations like that because... It's- it's not important. Or maybe it is important, but it's not important that I take note of it to point out to you guys of what it is, so... Let's keep moving forward. Man. I don't want to, like, interject too often in this with my train of thought because I'm afraid I'll get all scatterbrained and then I'll be all over the place and I'll never actually finish a thought. Um, because, uh, again, I will yield to the game telling a story. Am I supposed to- Oh! Oh, I thought- Oh, wow. Where did Joel go? Oh, there's Joel. Oh, man. Man. Because, again, the story of this game takes precedence, but also I wanted to let you guys know about the things that I've been through in my life and my relation to these experiences, and I want to, like, show that unique perspective. Because I, I may have said at the beginning this, this is like a unifying experience, but also everyone- Whoops, sorry, I'll be right back, Joel. I didn't- didn't mean to do that. I, I also wanted to, you know, show that just because one person has been through this doesn't mean that it's the same experience that many people have had. And other things that people have gone through don't often relate, you know, exactly. Am I not supposed to be here yet? Ooh. Wait. Oh. Hang on, wait. There was like some wind that drifted back and kind of went that way. I think it was just a minor bug in the game where, I don't know, I, I must have done things in the wrong order, no? Oh, come on. I think I've, I think I've encountered a bug. Uh, sorry, I said this was going to be uncut, but I gotta, I gotta get out of this real quick. Oop, there we go. Oh, whoa, hang on, I think I got something. Oh. Hey babe, just got done at the doctor. Um, now they think that maybe he's throwing up all the time because he has acid reflux, so they gave me a medication and we can give it to Joel, and they said we have to give it at least three full days, but that if he's still throwing up after that, then we can come back. And I mentioned the head tilt thing again, even though they keep saying it's 
not related, but you always have to mention that one weird outlying thing. So I told them how his head was tilted to the right, but they still say that that's probably not related at all. So I guess we'll just give this a try, and I don't know. I'll tell you more about it when you get home. Okay, yeah, I, I wasn't sure how I managed to get through. I could- I still can't interact with, uh, Joel on the slide here. I- I would have liked to got through that, but I- I literally can't do anything else. Uh, I- I had to restart, and then even Joel on the merry-go-round I can't interact with anymore, so I'm hoping that this isn't a persistent bug that's gonna follow me through this, because I don't want anything to really get in the way of this experience. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, the music shifted too. I think we know what this is all about. Now they said that Joel got sick when he was younger too. Like he, when he was one, did they say? So this is after that? Oh man. Oh. Oh, that's unpleasant. Uh, whoa, what the hell? What was that? Oh, I know what that was. Now we know what the blackness represents. I mean, obviously it was going to be cancer from the get-go, but fear I just... is cancer's preservative. Cancer's embalming oil. And you, oh. our accuser, are fear's oil salesman. You're a snake. I a serpent. A dragon with snuffed out coal on his breath, molting. Talons broken from the struggle to free yourself of your own skin. And welcome to the game. Man. I, I, I get what that was now, the shadow flowing uh, overhead. It's obviously a dragon because hence the name of the game. So now we, we really get to the heart of the matter. And again... I don't want to reiterate too many points, but I still cannot imagine what it's like to have to go through this if you're you're a parent seeing your child like this, because I'm not a parent. I, I, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a parent. I, I wouldn't make that assumption because I'm not even close to that point in my life, but still, I just can't imagine like the pain and like the 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 bartering. Oh. Hey, do you want a rug? No. Okay, let's rock. There we go. Do you ever think maybe Joel can hear better than he's supposed to be able to? Because I know, like, it's supposed to be moderate to severe hearing loss, but sometimes, like today, he hears music playing before I do. So I saw him dancing, and I had to look around to hear that a song was playing. And I just don't, like, if his hearing loss is that bad, I can't imagine. I don't know. I just wonder about it. Anyway, call me later. Bye. Hmm. I just know, like, I don't know. Again, I can't relate to this experience, and I don't want to make the assumption that I do. What does this mean? What, am I supposed to do something? No? Ah. Uh, oh boy. I'm not 100% sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Apparently what I did was good, and I got it done. Man. Oh, that just makes... 
It just makes the uh, chemotherapy drugs look so toxic. And, and in reality, they... Whoa, what the heck? Whoa. What just happened? Um, oh. Whoa. Hello. Hi. What? I am extremely confused. Are those growing bigger? Those are growing bigger, aren't they? Oh. Well, obviously they're just latex gloves that someone blew up, but that's more. Whoa. I'm a little weirded out. Again, uh, that that's- I'm, I must have been onto something, like, the the visuals are 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 in a certain style, and that certain style it doesn't quite fall in the uncanny valley, but at the same time it also is a little unsettling, which is interesting. Must be fighting off sleep at the moment. So if those touch the ground when they go down, yeah, that's when things get real sleepy. Yep, too late. Fighting sleep off. Whoa. Okay. Two thousand one space odyssey type of thing. Whoa. I can't move here. Oh! Bye, Joel! What are those things? Are those coming towards me? Am I- oh! I- oh! Oh my gosh, I'm controlling this! Oh, I think I'm supposed to avoid those. Ooh. I don't know how. Oh, where are they coming in? Are they coming in high? Ooh, I can't exactly go any lower. Ooh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Oh, I'm going to screw this up. I know I am. Oh, where do I go? Where do I go? Oh, I don't know where to go. Ooh, well, that looked closer than it actually was. Holy crap, I don't know where to go. Ah, ah! Okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> I didn't expect there to be actually... Oh, man. Like I said, I had no idea what to expect when going into this game. I cannot go any farther. <sighs> stop. Stop. Nope. Ah, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay, go left, 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 left. Ah, that's not good. Okay. Sorry, sorry. 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 Ah, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No. Ah, I, uh, sorry. The perspective is just very bizarre. I think I'm not near them. And for some reason, I- it, 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 it's weird, those objects are very hard to judge- oh crap. Judge distance on? So I'm- I'm doing my best, but oof. It's not going- not going the best. Oh, Stop it! Oh boy, this was a bad move. Oh, I went into- I went into bad territory. Oh no! I didn't expect I'd have to leave- Oh, I'm screwed. Ah. Oh no. Oh, hi. I don't think that was a- I don't think that was a thing that you could win, but then again, I did very poorly at that, I apologize. Hello. Huh. Well? Oh, hey. Oh, um, hi. I just wanted to take a shower, is that okay? Are you okay with Joel? Okay, thanks. Oh. Oh. Whoa. This experience is getting a little trippy. Oh, it's a puppy. Oh, it's a little pup. Oh, it's a little pup. Whoop. So weird. Oh, this is a fascinating experience. I did like I expected it to be like kind of a walkthrough story type of deal, but at the same time, I didn't know that it would be a, an uh, artistic endeavor. A and I appreciate that. I mean, I'm I'm not the most artsy person in the world, as many of you know. I'm I'm very minimalistic, and I I like simplicity. But at the same time, you can appreciate something in, in terms of crafting a story, in terms of artistic representation of what these complex emotions that can't exactly be conveyed in words 
are. You know what I mean? Because human language is nice and all, but at the same time, language is... It's a translation of our base emotions, so... And our base thoughts, so... And what a lot of people... And I appreciate art, because a lot of people who don't like art sometimes don't understand... I, and you're more than allowed to just not like art. That's totally fine. I'm not about to go in on art rampage here or judge you for n liking certain types of art or not liking certain types of art. But art, in my mind, is about emotion. And games being a, another form of art is about connecting that emotion. And most games, in terms of, like, emotion they want to convey, you know, excitement and fun and engagement, those complex emotions, but there are other emotions on an entire different spectrum, and crafting an experience that conveys those emotions is often far harder than getting the baser ones that we're all used to. And the ones that are even more complex to put into words. I, I actually don't know where I'm going here. I'm sorry, I got, I got, I got turned around quite a bit. Hello? Oh man. Oh no, was I supposed to be looking at all these? Oh no, I wasn't. Oh. Oh no. I meant to appreciate all that stuff. I don't think- I still don't think- yeah. I- it's all clicked to navigate. I would love to be able to walk around individually, but... Apparently I cannot, so... Man, are these the real pictures from these guys? Whoops. Come on now. Henry and Ella Oliver, untitled. Yeah. I don't know what these paintings represent. Oh, God, can you stop flipping around like that? Thank you. But anyway, enough of my artistic spiel. I'm not the person who is an expert on art or what art means and what that stuff means. All I'm saying is that this obviously has meaning to the people that go through these experiences. And... It's just really hard to nail that down. It, it, it's hard to nail it down, like, even to say what's good or bad in terms of emotions. That's why sometimes, you know, you go easy on people that get overly, yo, know, antagonistic against art because, like, uh, it's one of the human experiences. How do you even comprehend your own emotions? Like, how do you comprehend the, the human experiences by yourself? There's no guide to it. You know, there's no right way or a wrong way. You simply are. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling hey, about stuff I don't know about. Hospital now. So if you wanted to preheat the oven starting in about 30 minutes, that would work and we could throw in that lasagna. Um, do you know how they celebrate off treatment day? Like when kids are done with their treatments? I, I guess maybe you don't because you're not in the clinic as much as I am. But on someone's last day, they always bring them a cake and they sing happy off therapy day to you. Anyway, that happened today. I mean... It happens a lot, but today I cried. I just wanted that day so bad, you know? I just, like, we're not ever going to get that day. If he's better, we won't know that he's better. We don't get a day. Anyway, okay, call me if you can. Like, there's probably traffic, so I could talk on my way home. All right, bye. Um, I wonder if these are the actual paintings in the hospital that they were in. Sorry, that got me choked up a little bit. I don't know why. Anyway. Whoa! <laughs> what? Oh! Okay! Oh, I... I, I am... I, okay! I guess I'm supposed to avoid the giant fat chicken? Whoa, okay. I am very confused! Oh! I, oh, hi. Sorry about that. Sorry, cow. I... <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. I have no idea. Sorry! Oh, man. Punted him right out of the window. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, watch out for the banana. For the nanner. Oh. Alrighty then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay! Lum oh, what is- oh, I have no idea what all that is. Uh, obviously those are all the drugs, that's... Man. Uh-oh, whoa. Whoa. Okay, well that took a shift. Did anyone ask the doctor? 
Okay, is it just the doctor on call or is this our doctor? Well, because the on call doctor is just a resident. Is there a way we can talk to our doctor? It just seemed like yesterday in clinic they were going to let us go. I just want to know what the plan is. Who canceled the treatment? I mean, isn't it dangerous for him not to get it? I thought he needed that. I, I know you're just doing what you're saying, but can, can I can I just talk to the doctor that ordered it? Man, I I'm I'm assuming that represents the ups and downs of going through this experience. Like there there is no. There's not really a happy ending. It, it, just like everything else in life, it's just a series of events, and they, they can be good or bad. And you make the most of it. I, maybe this even too, like the shifting, every single step I take, it, it lights up and it, it doesn't light up. And it goes up and it goes down. Yeah. Uh, that's so complicated. It's it's so complicated. I, I I can't I can't describe it. And I'm not trying to describe it. I don't I don't want to describe it. I want it to be what it is for the sake of what it is and not for my interpretation of what it is. Whoa. That is intense. And what, what's even weirder is a lot of these elements are very familiar to me because, you know, I, I've seen all this firsthand and, and I know what that machine is in front of me. It's a targeted radiation therapy machine. I know because I've, I've seen it used on my dad. And... I don't know. I, I haven't thought about that thing in years. I, I didn't give that thing a thought since the last time I saw it, and now I'm, I'm thinking of it, and I can remember that whole day. You know, I can, I can remember that whole day. I remember it because on the way there, my dad criticized my driving skills. He told me, you know, I was driving too fast, and... You know, that... Things like that stick with you, but I forgot about it. Hey, it's you again. I love you. My friend. Oh. This is my favorite game. You want to see? Watch how I start it. <laughs> you touch it right here, then the big lion comes. Well, that doesn't sound good. I don't think I want to know about the big lion. Man. All right. Oh, how loud? That's like him. Yeah, hear me roar. Go for it. Why? That was a pretty scary roar. Don't be afraid. You might want to cover your ears. Okay, I'm on it. Oh, he's getting ready. Wow. Did he just roar the universe into existence? That was really impressive. I didn't understand any of those words. What did you say? What is this? Oh, what am I doing? What am I? Oh. Oh, these are the constellations. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the horse. This is, um, a giraffe, apparently. And this is, um, the lion? Nope, that's another Poochie. Oh, he was on the ram. Okay, so I, just, I, get, I guess I just gotta get all these constellations properly engaged. Oh, okay. I think he's got a ride on all of them. 
Go for the- go for the giraffe. It's obviously better. Well, probably not better than the dog. I, I don't know if the giraffe can do backflips, but I'm gonna try my best here. How about go for- yeah, there you go. That would be my favorite. I think the horsey's gonna be next. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, um... I'm just trying to ponder... the meaning. Cause it, that, that's all I'm trying to do when I'm, when I'm seeing this. I'm trying to open my mind to what the meaning of this is, and I'm not entirely sure what the meaning behind this scene is, because I guarantee you that each scene in this game is a representation of the life of everyone that has gone through this. Joel included. So I gotta remember that some things might be from Joel's perspective. Or at least their interpretation of what that means. You know. Anyway. That's a lot of cards. Elsie, we love you dearly and miss you daily, Seuss. But have no fear, our story's just begun. Did I start at the wrong end? Let me start over here. cards are. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <sighs> That's a lot of cards. So many cards. Oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get through all of these. Oh man. Oh, I have to walk. Man. This terrible routine. Watching you. Waiting for you to wake, hoping you will never remember these days of illness and treatment. One day, I'll bring you here, show you your tiny handprints on the wall, and you'll be annoyed that we all think of you as some big miracle. Cancer will be such a small part of all you could grow to be. You will tire of hearing about it. You won't want to see the cards and notes I saved. And I won't mind at all. I'll hold the memories of this hard day. You just leave it behind. That's a lot of handprints. I hope you guys aren't waiting for me to have words of wisdom here. I, I, I don't quite have... Um, I don't quite have, uh, 
and my thoughts together. Oh, sorry, I already read that one. There's so many cards. So many cards. <sighs> oh man, there's so many cards. I don't want to miss any. These are all just goodbyes. Yeah. I, I want to hit every one of these. I do. Because... Because cause what's fascinating is... And especially here in representation of this, and this may seem... This may seem trivial to go through each of these. But the important thing to remember is... That... In, in all of this, in, in every one of these cards, it may be a short little few words and it may not seem like much, but this entire game is about one person. It's about one. And each of these cards is about another person. So, to know that that every single card here is just a small piece of someone else's life. Oh, I don't think I can get to all that cards. But to know that each of these, oops, uh, is another piece of someone's life. Yeah, it's important. It's important to know that every single person who's gone through something like this, they've had an experience much like this game and what this game is, and they've had an experience much like what the family of Joel has gone through. And that's just important to remember. And these small tokens, you know, and there's so many. Oh, there's so many. Oh, there's so many. How do you how do you pick which ones? But that's something to hold true to other things. You know. Cause there are there are it's it's not all tragedy. There are, there are some success stories with cancer and it's getting better every year. And hopefully one day, you know, we'll be able to put you know, this sort of thing behind us. Not that we'll ever be able to defeat death, or uh, I don't think we will. You know, and I don't even know if that's a goal that everyone should have, but... You know... It's all about... You know, learning to see things in perspective for everyone involved, everyone who's been through something like this, everyone who has seen this. Anyway, I'm getting that rambly part again, but I, th I, hope, I, I hope I made my point. And I think this is a good card to end on. There's so many. And I think, you know, we, I wish I could get to all these, but it would take a long time. <sighs> oh, I feel guilty turning my back on some of these. <sighs> Man, so many. Oh. And admittedly, like, you know. Yeah, that was an important thought anyway. Sorry. Oh, are you pointing where I should be looking? <laughs> thanks, thanks, Joel. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. Huh. Okay. All right. 
How about the cow? No? Ah, there we go. Former male plays building blocks with the cows. <laughs> Why? Former Bill plays fetch with the pigs. Ah. Uh, that's weird things for Farmer Bill to do. Former Bill plays go fish with the ducks. Uh, again. Hmm. <laughs> that both says two things about Farmer Bill. Huh. Interesting. The horses invented a new scripting language called Equiscript. Ooh, fancy. The horse seems the most interesting. Yeah, that horse. The horse seems pretty smart. Admittedly, I think that's actually appropriate in this scenario. This bizarre experience thing that I'm going through. What polite pigs. That. Go to heaven. Goats go to town. Okay. Th this is a weird toy. I, I, I'm sorry, I, guys. It's not good. Well, that was the name of the chapter. Oh. Wow. What is this? Size matters. If I know how big it is, I can I can face it. I can size it up. It's quite small at this point, but unfortunately, the size isn't terribly important. Any recurrence means the chemotherapy has failed. This is a tragedy. I guess I have imagined it. I've imagined it a lot, but not like this. It's different. I thought I would sob uncontrollably or puke just right on the floor. I thought I'd shake or wail or something. I guess this is shock. Tragedy, he said. That's right. That's the perfect word for this. It's a tragedy. I wonder if he says that every time. He's crying a little. I love him for that. He's not callous. He's genuinely sad. She is too. So there just aren't any treatment options that are curative. Oh, man. And that's a fascinating thing. Like, there's no, there's no right way to respond to it. Everyone responds to terrible news differently. Like, I remember the first time that I heard that my dad had cancer. That's a that's a personal story I'm, I don't think I'm gonna go into. We're very good at end of life care. We're very good at managing the pain and masking symptoms at the end of life. Okay, I said fatal. I said, not curative. Have I said the word death yet? I can tell they understand, though. A whole new vocabulary. All the rules are different now. I think it's really sinking in. Oh, she's crying. We should wrap this up soon. All the details can wait. ...to decide whether we could do some radiation or just chemotherapy. What would the radiation do? Well, the radiation could probably kill the tumor we see now, which would prevent it from causing any symptoms. But it would not keep more tumors from developing. Because we know if it's spread here, it would spread other places too. Oh. It's not time yet. <sighs> oh, man. Sorry. I'm a disgusting Science slob. Science, it's simpler. Measurable. I get A, I get B, I subtract C, and I get this result. And I can do something to control or at least have the sense that I'm controlling it. But now all we have left is a miracle. And miracles are fickle. They don't always come, and we don't always know why. But if Joel's miracle doesn't come, I, I hope he lives. 
I've always hoped. Now I can't do anything but hope. Oh, radiation. At least we can do something. Hope doesn't require signing papers or driving to hospitals or holding Joel in my lap. Hope is for something someone else has to do for us. And when doctors can't, invisible Jesus must. We're so sorry. Oh, man. Oh, God, I do not want a replacement baby. If that was your plan, I am not on board. I don't want some new baby to help me move on. I would not have chosen this. Oh, God. Joel has to live, or I will not love this baby. You're welcome. I'm sorry, guys. It's not good. Oh. They don't Man. Where is it? How big is it? Well, it's in the frontal cortex. And it's quite small at this point. But the side, oh, this is so weird. Any recurrence means the chemotherapy has failed. Oh. This is a tragedy. With an HDRT, as soon as you have a recurrence of any kind, it is fatal. I'll hold it. I'll save it. We have already thrown all the chemotherapy we have at it. We can't continue to give him chemotherapy, but we know it's resistant to it. So there just aren't any treatment options that are curative. That's... That's so weird. Again, I'm not... I'm not the best to interpret what other people feel in certain circumstances. Uh, but I wonder if this is their interpretation of Joel's perspective on all this. Because a lot of this game has been about perspective and seeing things from other perspectives and understanding that each person responds differently and they respond in a variety of ways and where they- Whoa, what, what am I looking at? Whoa. What? Uh, I think I ran in- Oh. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, it's just like people respond in different ways and just because someone responds one way initially doesn't mean that that's How they're gonna respond later or that's what they really mean. I don't know And it's another thing about talking about hope talking about what hope there is and the hope you have in terms of situations like this and, and what hope can do you know because what can hope do? Hope can do nothing. Nothing except make people feel. Hope is just another thing that makes people feel something. Maybe hope is art. I don't know. <sighs> oh, man. Now I believe I'm the bird, I believe. Is there something else I'm supposed to see first? Nah. I have so many oh. things stirring around in my spirit that I have to write to settle myself and find God's wisdom in the midst of chaos. I'm scared I won't be strong enough to face the things we might have to face in the coming weeks and months. But then I remember how much grace God gave us to walk out everything we've already faced. I've never felt completely overcome, and I've never felt alone. So no matter what comes next, and I truly cannot even begin to guess how this will go. I know we will be cared. I want to shout out, look what God is about to do. Watch how he delivers Joel. And at the same time, I want to roll up in a silent ball and wait it out with fear and trembling, so aware of all my doubt but yet convinced that my doubt is insignificant compared to God's faithfulness. Yeah. And some people turn to religion for times like this. I mean, that's just another thing that everyone deals in crises in their own way. Like, who's to judge? 
Who's to say one more than another? As you ready for bed? Joel, lay down. Okay. Should we do a song? Okay, uh, big boys, why don't you come in here and we'll sing the littles and lullaby. I'm tired. I know, it's always bedtime. Ugh, okay. Oh, Elijah, lay down. Whoa, where are you going? No. Whoa. Oh, that's the lighthouse. Uh. Huh. Man. And it's also, it's also bizarre. Like, once you find out that cancer is terminal, like... We've been through so much already. This is a new degree of tragedy, but it's not so much different from the struggle we've already been living. We pressed into God. We pressed into faith. We fought until we found peace. We stood in peace when our flesh wanted to strive more. We stood in peace when it started to feel like laziness or foolishness. Or both <laughs> we waited for God to direct us specifically in prayer because all the directions we had initiated had not panned out we prayed for no nausea because that's what we felt in our spirits we were supposed to pray even though we'd prayed it countless times before while Joel continued to vomit we saw one small miracle and then another we waited to pray specific things until we were given specific direction and we saw bigger miracles. And yet, if you asked either of us if we were doing enough, trying hard enough, we would say no. Yeah. Anyway, to finish what I was saying and start another thought is, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting conundrum when you find out the cancer is fatal because you, you get that bombshell of knowledge, and then what do you do with it? You, you walk about your normal life until you eventually die. Like, it, it, that's a blunt way to say it, but that's literally the experience. Like, what do you do after you're told that you're gonna die? I've never faced this myself, but, you know, that... That's what happens. And then you have to continue on and find joy in, in whatever you can. Yeah. And I have another thought later on, but I'll get to it. I'll probably forget it. I feel nothing but pride for the way you battled cancer. I remember the way you learned to ride your tricycle down the hospital hallway instead of down the sidewalk like other three-year-olds. It was hard for me to pray to God, thy will be done, when I really just wanted so desperately for him to heal you. In the four and a half years that you dealt with harsh treatments, only once did you ask why God let you get cancer. I hope he has been able to explain the why to you as I have always believed that he knew how strong you were and wanted to use you and your situation to positively impact so many lives. I remember how you never let me go to bed without telling me that you loved me and how those were your very last words to me. You taught me what was truly important in life, son. Still now, years after you left Earth, people are impacted by your life and the lessons you taught us. Thousands of people from around the world read your blog and still feel such a strong connection to you, even though they never met you in person. Hmm. So these are notes from other people in the hospital, too? Is every bottle a note? Oh. No, every bottle- some of those bottles are like baby bottles, I believe. I don't think they're all notes. Anyway. Yeah, I- I can't- I can't remember what my other thought was. It, it probably wasn't very important, just like the majority of my thoughts during this. So, how long will we be in California? Uh, hmm. Whew, I don't actually know. That's kind of why we're packing up everything, is because... If the trial works really well, then maybe we'll stay in California for a really long time. Like, as long as it keeps helping Joel, then we want to stay and do the best we can for him and stay there where he's getting help. But if the medicine starts to not work as soon as it's not helping him, I promise we'll come back home. Uh, are we going to Disneyland? Yeah, of course. The important question. You can't be here for so long? I'm kind of excited, but I'm kind of not. I mean, I think it'll be fun, but I just don't like missing school. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that one. Oh, there's so many notes. As this long day draws to a close, 
I am tired, but not sleepy. My face is puffy from crying. I have a dry throat and dry hands, a slight headache, and a desire to write down absolutely everything. I want to describe the feeling of being entirely empty and entirely resolute. I want to explore how I can be deeply sad and incredibly hopeful at the same time. I want to talk about holding Joel's hand, walking down the hall wanting to soak in the moment, to memorize the feeling of having his hand and mine, to let it matter, and then hating that my thoughts swing to, because what if I can't hold his hand one day? and hating that thought, wishing I could just appreciate each second of Joel without that appreciation spilling into the pre-morning I refuse to do because I believe he will live. But instead of fighting the brief thoughts of mourning, choosing to fight instead that lie that says that those thoughts betray some doubt, some mistrust of God when I know that those thoughts make me human that God knows I am human. He doesn't make Joel's victory dependent on me never feeling unsure. Hmm. Oh, man. I won't let myself hold anything back this time. I would rather feel disappointed and let God heal my heart than to feel like I did not push myself as far as I possibly could in faith for my son. I remember the day I was diagnosed. I remember the hallucinations from the high fever of five-year-old's nightmares. I remember my mother silently weeping in the doctor's office. I remember friends and family gathered around my hospital bed in prayer. I remember the two-hour ambulance ride to St. Jude where they could better care for me. I remember the two and a half years of weekly chemo treatments, the numerous lumbar punctures and bone marrow aspirates. I remember doctors Bell, Dahl, and Kalinsky, nurses Jean, Judy, and Dale, Miss Chris in social work, Darlene in travel, all part of the team that cared for me. I am a walking memorial to their successes. I remember the other patients I'd see each time I went to the hospital for chemo. I remember when some stopped coming. I knew what that meant. I remember the years of summer camp for children with cancer, children like me. I remember their laughter and the midnight talks of fears and joys, normal kid stuff, some less so. I remember when some stopped coming. I knew what that meant. But I remember them. I am, and other survivors are, memorials to those who lost their fights. Uh, <sighs> man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to all the notes in the woe. I didn't expect that. Oh, a, her expectation is so maddening sometimes. Do you know what she wrote on the eve of Joel's first surgery? The one back in January when we first found the tumor? I seriously feel like a kid on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I'm pleading for God to spare his life. And I'm tempted to despair because self-inspection leads me to conclude I shouldn't expect much of anything. And yet my wife is expecting a surprise party from the Lord, replete with presents and supernatural miracles. <sighs> I envy her. Yeah. And then the counterpart, some people can't turn to religion. Some people, and I'm not saying, commenting on anyone's religious beliefs, that's not what I'm doing, I'm saying some people approach crisis logically, you know. Some people want to put hope in other things, some people want to try to control it. I mean, there, there's no correct way. Joel the baby knight. Hop in bed, boys. Let's go. Boys, get in bed. Oh, can you at least tell us a story? 
Okay. Um, <sighs> sure. Oh. Okay. This is the story of a very brave knight. Uh huh. Oh. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Joel the baby knight. But he's also Joel the very brave knight. Uh huh. He's being chased by a dragon. Uh oh. Huh. <laughs> oh. Because of the streamer? Mm -hmm. Where does the dragon live? Um, in a forest. Ugh, is the why dragon am, big? Why am yeah. I walking? Oh, okay. Why is am I walking towards it? Woo! I ducked. So much fire. So much fire. I ducked. So, Joel has armor, like a sword and a shield and stuff. Ooh, or maybe a spear. Yeah, that sounds good. So, whoa, so whoops. Uh oh. Well, I didn't know that was coming. Sir Joel, with his sword and his shield and his awesome spear and his super jumping ability, was being chased by a dragon named Cancer. What other superpowers? Yeah. Are there? Uh, he also has grace. That's not a superpower. <laughs> it's the best superpower. Do you guys know ah. what grace means? Yeah, it's kind of like help. Yeah, it's kind of like help. <laughs> like help. Yeah, close. Close enough. You did good. You know, and he's not the only one who's ever tried to fight this dragon. Some very brave knights have fought this dragon and lost. And some are able to drive the dragon off. And they can go home, and they can quit fighting for a while. And the kingdom can be safe. Joel's <laughs> been fighting this dragon for a long time, huh? A long time. But Joel found a nice empty cave where he could rest. And it seems like the dragon couldn't find him. But just when he thought that the danger was past, the dragon found his hiding spot and came after him in the cave. Uh -oh. That dragon's going to kill you. Joel's going to lose. Why do you say that? Because Joel is just a baby. Then you can't kill dragons. Hey, you'll see about that. You're right. Baby can't kill a dragon. But that's the best part of this story. Ow. God fights for Joel. So he fights that dragon cancer right with Joel. And we know that God can win even if Joel can win. That's Chris. Huh. Yeah. Uh -oh. I think I think I'm in some sort of a sweet spot that I'm not gonna get much damage over here. Shibbity, shibbity. Whoa, Trixie. Trixie, are ya? Oh, ah. Oh, no. No! Don't make me start over. Well, well I almost I had that. He died from cancer. Ah, uh, I had that. I had that. Tim fought so well. Oh, I, I don't think I could have won. So strong. God let him rest. It may have seemed like the dragon won because Tim died. We know that Tim's in heaven and that he's with God and that God is so proud of him. So maybe for Tim getting to be done fighting was Oh, I see. I can just crouch. Eh, 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 eh. Come at me, dragon. Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. Huh. I don't think anyone can beat this dragon. I think it's just about getting the high score. Hey, you foolish fool. Yeah, I don't think there's a way to win this, so I think the only way to progress is probably to lose. If I had to guess. <sighs> This is fascinating. It, it really is. Like, I'm not even joking about that. It's, it, this is legitimately fascinating. All of it is. I might have missed that entirely. 
Because I, I wouldn't have looked at the ring. I almost didn't. So I guess I can get out of here. That's a bite taken out of that preserver. Yeah. Okay, where am I headed? Over here. Oh, that's a lot of notes. That's a lot of notes. Uh. Oh. Ryan! Oh, Ryan, get in the boat! <laughs> I can't. You have to, you'll drown! We're already drowning. How can you sit there like that? Despair doesn't help anything. <laughs> Neither does false hope. And I'm not despairing. How can you say false hope? You're drowning! Well, you're missing your oars! And you don't even know where you're going. And yet you're so sure you're gonna get there. It's better than drowning. Well, enjoy floating on the surface like you always do. There's nothing deep about drowning. Just get in the boat. You have to let me feel this. Someone has to. That's not fair. I love him as much as you do. I just really believe we're going to be okay. That was about the most direct symbolism that's been in this game. Do I go in this again? Whoop, no, that's not what I was doing. Well, all right, then I, I missed out on some things. Can I go back? I can't even go back. Can I go back? Oh, no. Sorry about that, guys. I really thought I was going I'm for the sure life preserver. I'm sure looks like denial. But seeing Joel dying does not make me any less certain that he will be here. In some ways, I feel more certain. Not because the same doubts don't come to me, but because I know that they will not be entertained much longer. Because this chapter is almost finished, and we will have an ending one way or the other. So the doubts and fears that make me reaffirm that even if I'm wrong, this is where I stand, become less and less powerful. Uh, it looks like I can't get back either. Oh, maybe? Okay, good. Sorry about that. I was just very worried that I wasn't going to be able to go over here. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm only going to get the note that is, I believe, related to the story, which is this one. I'm reminded that having faith does not mean denying what is happening to Joel. Faith means knowing exactly what is happening and also knowing that God has a truth that trumps every other fact. Hmm. And let me try this red one here. We miss Carrie at week 12. Sad, sad. But surely the next one will go better. It does. We relax after week 12. The belly grows. We take pictures. Alex talks and plays music to the little one inside. I walk in the frozen North Sea. Skip the sauna. No risk to this one. Week 29, a sonogram bonus twins. We float on air, we brainstorm names. Week 31, we crash. Too soon, too soon. They whimper, open eyes, look into ours. Off to the incubators. We drag ourselves home, cry, hope, pray. We visit, touch, keep track on a wall chart. Stefan's heart beats strong. He grasps a finger. Then he fades, his brain bruised from breach birth. Day five, he dies. We grieve, but pray for Nicholas. He gains weight, his heart is strong. Then he too fades, his intestinal tract necrotic, falling apart. Day 10, Nicholas dies. We want to die too. We despair into darkness, but hold together, not easy when a child dies. The what ifs torment for a while. What if I hadn't swum? If I hadn't lifted groceries? If we'd had a different doctor? But we go on to have three wonderful living children. Still, we miss these two 
always. That was a fascinating departure from everything that has been here so far. Like, there's a lot of stories out there. That's the thing. That's the thing that, like, it's another perspective thing. It's just another, like, generalization of what life is in all of its entirety. There's so many different ways. Predatory words of comfort meant to reassure us and help us accept Joel's death don't sit well with me. They aren't offensive because I know the heart behind them is good, but they are weak words because it's so obvious to me that death is the given. I don't have to work to be ready for it or accept it. It is coming whether I would accept it or not. It has been coming slowly for so long. I don't have to work to understand that Joel is dying. It is obvious. Heaven is amazing. And so I'm not worried about death. It will come regardless of where I stand and wait. But now, death is circling close enough for redemption to finally feel closer. See, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, because like I said, there's multiple ways to face something. And like, I don't know if the way she's going about it is a good way for it, always clinging on to hope while also realizing the, 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 the impossibility of this, like the, the challenge that she faces or, you know. This is the part of the story where a daring rescue can thwart death's intentions just in time, perhaps when it looks like it's already too late. I want to watch for that. I don't need to focus my eyes on death, studying it in its slow progression. Its course is already clear. But there is a glory that is coming, and its journey to us is wild and quick and frightening, and I want to be watching for that glory. I want to stand trembling in awe before God and his power. Not sure that this thing that we've asked for is something we can quite manage, but trying anyway. Death is the given, but the life that is possible now for Joel, the miracle that could come now that death is so close, is something worth pursuing, worth risking everything to see with my own eyes. Yeah, because it, it, it's an interesting perspective to see it from like an outsider looking at what she's experiencing and she is so sure that this is the right action and who am I to say that it's not like I said everyone deals with it in their own way but also at the same time clinging so hard to hope can make you blind to everything else and also the people around you and I'm not here to say one's wrong or the other like I, I definitely want to emphasize that idea that who knows? But at the same time, like, she's so sure of her faith and, and and what she's feeling in there, while at the same time, the father here is drowning, and maybe he needs help, you know? Maybe he needs help, and, and, and her constant assurance is, at the same time, not helping him. Oh, oh, whoa, am I, I'm not pointing in the right direction. Here we go. That's correct. Yeah. But best not to let yourself drown. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You know, I said, I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but I, I think it's probably just best that I do. It seems like he's stuck. Come on. Come on. Ah, you're almost there. No. It's getting dark now. Yeah. I mean, I, I made it out. I probably made it out to seem like it was some considerably dark story and it was bad. But no. The, the story of when I first found out about my dad having cancer, it... it, it Really, there's there's not a lot to it. it. It's more of a perspective thing of what I was talking about, like 
No two people respond to it the same way. But at the same time, mine was probably very typical because, like, he, they... My dad and my stepmom, they sat me down at a table and they had gotten me lunch or dinner from, I don't know, I, I believe Wendy's. And I was just sitting there eating and then they sat me down to have a very serious conversation and like what it was, was just, I, uh, I, they told me the news and at first, like it didn't even register. You know, it, it didn't. It, it was like, oh, okay, it, it, they might as well have told me the weather, you know. It was one of those things. And I remember just sitting there, and it wasn't even like a conscious thing. It wasn't even like a, I processed it. It wasn't even like I calculated it. It wasn't like I thought about it at all. Like, what they said to me, went in, I went, okay. And then I sat there for a few minutes. And then all of a sudden, I didn't, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't feeling anything, all of a sudden, like the full weight of it just hit me. It wasn't something that I actually comprehended, it was just the fact that, like the weight of what that meant hit me and I just started crying, like harder than I've ever cried, just suddenly I couldn't stop and it was, it was so weird because, just the news, and, and like this is just, like, I, I'm just saying this because, you know, I wanted to get this out in the open. There's nothing special to this story. It's it's a story that a lot of people have heard before, and obviously it doesn't... Like, I'm not going through as much pain as my dad was, probably. Or definitely. It, it's just... It, I don't know. It's a perspective thing. And, and I know what this wants me to do. I was just pausing there so I could tell that story. And I don't know. Yeah. For some reason, I wanted him to swim downwards. Because <sighs> this, this is what I meant when I said I wanted to take the appropriate time playing this game. Because I knew it was going to take me back to a lot of things and to a lot of places oh. and a lot of journeys. The sunset looks pretty from here. The orange glow cast on the wall. Hmm. Better than the muted colors of this hospital. I wonder why they choose blues and greens. <laughs> they... The ones who choose the colors that heal. Green for life. Blue. Hmm. For comfort. Purple stripes to hide the stains. <laughs> huh. This chair is too small and sticks to my skin. I hate vinyl. Well, better get up then. Blue. Hmm. Purple. <laughs> hmm. The ocean, maybe? No. I don't Under know. the ocean. Silent. Warm. And salty. Like tears. Hmm. These are a lot of jumps to make. He won't stop crying. I don't blame him. He feels miserable. I hate that we're here. I hate that he's sick. I just want to feel better. Funny? A bounce, a bounce, a bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> mm. 
No, he won't stop crying. Oh no. He's hungry. Hmm. Did I do it? Oh, food. That was quick. Wow. Back to the vinyl. He's screaming louder. Buddy, don't you want juice? He hits the box. I don't catch it. <laughs> he drinks it greedily. Big, deep gulps. Okay, Jolie, that's enough. Breathe, kiddo. And he does. And I wipe his face of snot and tears, and juice. And then he vomits, and I catch it. I always catch it. I know you're thirsty, buddy, but you'll throw it up. No, don't grab too hard. You'll squirt all the juice out. Here, let me have it. I mean, this room. I didn't used to. For a, for a moment, it was an adventure. I was cast as the compassionate and caring father, holed up with his fragile son in a small cleft in the rocks. The storm raging, waves ripping at the sharp black rocks below, and enveloped in my arms, he feels safe, and I am holding him firmly trying not to slip because if you hold tight enough nothing will take him right oh man because that's that's another thing about the battle with cancer like that is another thing there it, it's not just one day it's not an event it's not the start or the end of it there's Weeks, months, and years involved with it. There's an entire timeline of just living with this so weight. Oh, late, Joel. Lay down. I can't hold you. I can't make you feel better. Okay, buddy. Okay. I'll hold you. Oh, Joel Bug, you look so miserable. No! Don't hit your head on the bars, Joel. Joel! Joel! I know you're mad. Please stop. Please. St stop. I shake. I weep. I pray. I plead. I need. Peace. I am empty. You are. I don't know how much you are. You are there. I want you here. I want you to call my son. And you've brought us this far. He's still here, not dead, not there, with you. Oh God, I want to be here with me. Please. Peace. He sleeps. Yeah, 
that's the thing. It's 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 years years of struggle sometimes. There's a story in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples are on a boat. And a furious storm hits the sea and everyone thinks they're gonna die. And where do you think Jesus is? Rowing alongside them? No. He's asleep. In the back of the boat. So his disciples are freaking out and wake him up and they say, don't you care if we drown? So Jesus gets up and he says to the storm, quiet, be still. And the sea becomes completely calm. Then he asks his disciples why they are so scared and if they have any faith at all. Like he was frustrated with them. Because even though Jesus said, let's go to the other side of the lake, his disciples thought he was going to just let them die. I'm assuming they went to California to try to pursue another form of treatment, which is, you know, when you're told that, you know, there's there's nothing else to be done, you know, parents aren't going to take that. Like, you always, you always pursue something like that. Because when... Everyone does eventually, I suppose. than that if he does die will Jesus even care will he weep for him as he did for Lazarus will he weep for me I think greater than my fear of death is that of insignificance or rather my default assumption is that my thoughts and passions and loves and the stuff of my being are insignificant how could the creator of all that is and ever was love my son as he did Lazarus. And could my soul stranded on this blue raft awash in a sea of stars, ice, and dust matter enough to him to turn his hand in mercy? Lazarus. Five minutes later, he raised Lazarus from the dead. I'll probably, I'll wrap up my thoughts at the end of this. I just, I have a funny feeling it's getting closer to maybe not the end of the game, but the end of this section in the game. I'm not sure. I mean, I, got, I have a lot of thoughts on this because of my personal experience through it, but that doesn't mean that I know the right answers. Anyway. 
I'm sorry. I should have known we'd both end up in the same place. We always do. It just scares me every time. I just really believe he'll be healed. I, I know you believe too, just when you act like that, I get all unsure. I don't know that. What do you mean? I just hope that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I wish I had more thoughts right now. I, w I really do. I, w I wish I had more thoughts about this. I, I, w I wish, like, I had more personal experience to relate about this section here. Because... Whoa. That is intimidating. Mm. Man, this is... This is intimidating here. What time is it? I don't know what time it is. Is it, is it symbolic that the sword and shield are broken now? Man, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of symbolism in this game, and if obviously this is a this is a religious portion of the game, but uh, like it's important to remember that this specific portion is still a part of their experience. And the reason I was saying like, who am I to judge what people believe in? And, and the reason I say that is because from one person's perspective to another, whatever brings someone hope in a situation like this, who am I to remove that hope? Or who is anyone to remove that hope from anyone who has been affected by this? And I, I've said this over and over the entire time that I've played this, there is no right way to handle something. And this level may be called the Temple of God, which is very, very, very interesting. But at the same time, some people, you know, it doesn't matter what you believe in, everyone can still get cancer. And everyone needs to remember to be kind to one another in these experiences because at the end of it all, you know, like death is the great unifier in, in what we do and, and what I remember from my experiences with it, you know, are... You know, they're one thing amongst many. Anyway, I, I'm rambling again. I've, I, I didn't really know what I was talking about there, so I won't, I won't make an assumption that I do. Huh. Oh. Oh. Man. I I I honestly don't want to I don't know what to make of this. Okay, I don't know what I did. All right, something's happening. Okay, I don't know if I did something right there or, or it just decided to do it on its own. I can't move now. Okay. Whoa. Oh, my 
supposed to? Oh. I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Oh. He was not in the wind. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. He was here. I'm I'm guessing that was telling that Joel died possibly I don't know Is that So here we are and the air is emptier without his laugh and yet our hearts are still full but with a different drink. And this ride we've been on for so long is silent. And so also the Lord. And so we sit here in this new silence and long for the music to start again and for the disc to spin again, even if it means going round and round for many more years. For at least we would be moving and Joel would be laughing here on earth and not only in heaven. But in this space, I sense his silence is only because he is drawing his breath. And now we know love and longing, empty and full, all in one moment. And I am grateful that we loved him well. And that we miss him well. And I hope that in the Lord's next breath, he will whisper his love song to you, his beloved. And that you will know him differently and more deeply. But now, you grieve in silence, yet not without his presence. It's bizarre, you know, after, after all the struggle, after all the hope, after all the, the different ways of trying to rationalize what happens, you know, it, it, it is bizarre because afterwards, you know. I remember you. You made it too. I'm glad you're here. I love it here. I bet you have liked it too. Wow, you got a lot of pancakes there. <laughs> Look at all of these pancakes. Did you ever see pancakes like this? No. Nah. me. No. Nah. This one is for me. And the other one is for my dog. I always wanted a dog, and now I got one. I even got to name it. Thank you. This is, am I? No, bubbles? <laughs> Yep, I got Maybe the bubbles. Catch a bubble. Ah. To buy them. I don't think Manju's gonna do much of anything. I love bubbles. <laughs> Look, I can catch one. I want more bubbles. I 
I love the bubbles. <laughs> I think I think it was uh, waiting for me to not you blow so many bubbles. A little bit, maybe. I'm Jimmy and Jimmy. Have another pancake. <laughs> Have a whole pancake. <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's the end, because that's representative of, I'm guessing, Joel in the afterlife. And that's the end of the game. That was a, that was a really interesting experience. Joel Evan Green. I mean, it's, it, it's so fascinating. That was weird. Just seeing his picture like made it really real for a second there. I don't know these people. But I can like, you know, I can see like what they've gone through. And and, and that's the thing, you know, my dad my dad died from cancer and it's it's not the cancer that you know that that I think about you know it's it's not the cancer itself that I you know look back on cuz I, I don't want that to be the memories that I have of my dad you know and, and I it, it's not even something anymore that like I don't it is not like it keeps me awake at night you know I'm fine uh now and, and I was I was fine you know not not too too much longer after my dad passed away and and, and that's the thing it's the hardest times are the struggle during and the pain of seeing during. And hi, <laughs> for the first time this whole gameplay, Chica came up to say hi. Chica normally records with me. She's just very quiet pup. And it's just, you know, it's 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 not it's not it's not after that gets me sad. It's not before that gets me sad. I don't look back at all the memories that I had with my dad and I, I don't get sad. You know, I may get teary-eyed because I, I look back fondly on the times that we had together, but it's, you know, it's the struggle that really, really tears me up knowing that, you know, it's that sense of helplessness that really, really affects people. It's a sense of not being able to do anything when all you want in the world is to be able to do something. You know, in that, in the time of greatest need, when you wish that in all the world, the only thing that you could possibly want is to be able to help that person. Like, you would give anything And like I said before, you know, I don't know what it's like to be a father and I don't know what it's like to be a, you know, to to see a child go through those things. But I'd like to think that, you know, I'd at least feel that same feeling of 
the desire to do absolutely anything to help. You know, you'd give... You'd give anything. You'd give absolutely anything to be able to help. And it's this feeling that you can't. There's nothing you can do. And those are the times that get you down. Those are the times that I look back and I actually get sad for. And seeing like the changes that go through. You know, the family and, and my dad himself, you know, seeing him, you know, change. That's hard to deal with. That is brutal to deal with. And this game painted it in a very... I, I can't say good light because it's not a good experience. It's not a good thing. But this was a game that, like, I, I, I I'm really happy that I played it. So uh, I, I feel you know it's it's bizarre. I feel oddly good. I feel I feel really good. I thought I thought when I came out of this experience I was gonna be like so unbelievably sad, but I feel good. Like I remember like when I went through that journey, I had so many memories of the times that I was with my dad. And even through the struggle, even through the hard times, even through the worst of it, I remember my dad. And he's such a huge inspiration to me, and he's such a huge reason why I'm the person I am today. And he's such a huge reason why I push myself to try to be better every day. And it's amazing to see. And I feel good. It's really bizarre. I feel really good. Because I, I think the end of that game, the, the thing that it was trying to come across, and this whole game was like an experience of feelings. It was like a storybook of emotions of this this family and what they went through and and at the end it was it was supposed to be a feeling of peace. Like not necessarily hope, but a feeling of of peace. And that's, you know, take that for whatever way you want, whatever whatever you will, but I don't know. Like that that connected with me. Like I felt that peace because I met peace with, you know, my dad passing and, and I'm at peace with who I am and I'm at peace with the fact that he didn't get to see who I am now and that's okay because I've been very fortunate and, and a lot of people haven't and thankfully I haven't had to experience cancer personally I, I haven't had to go through it and and I've had a tumor, but it wasn't cancerous. Like, I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea that I've been through chemotherapy or I've been through anything like that. I haven't. And, um, you know, it's just, I don't know. I don't feel sad. I really don't. And I, I, I just want to say thank you, everybody, so much for asking me to play this game and asking me to go through this and I really hope that I gave it the attention that it deserved because I wanted to make sure that I went into this with like eyes wide open and taking in absolutely everything from this and I feel like this was an experience that need needed to be made like this game needed to be made not necessarily for any one specific person but just in general it needed you know it, it needs to exist if only to tell this family's story. So anyway, uh, uh, that's that's about all I have to wrap up with this. I, I could tell more stories about my dad, but I'll save that for another day. I've I've said a lot throughout this video that I didn't think I was going to talk about, and you know, just thank you everybody so much for listening. And uh, also, you know, just closing stuff. Uh, I did mention at the beginning of this video. Uh, you know, there is information about the Crisis Text Line, which is uh, the charity that we're, we're doing. A lot of the people in Revel Mode are doing uh, uh, this next week upcoming for a while. And, uh, you know, that's, that's another important element because cancer is one thing, but there's, there's so much more. Being human is hard. <laughs> Being human is really, really hard. And there's so many things that need to be helped and there's no time to be petty there's no time to be, you know, hold grudges against people. 
I'm not talking about anything specifically. I'm just talking in general. Like, there, there's, there's no time for it because you don't know how much time you have. You really don't. And you have to make the best of it while you can. So anyway, that's, that's literally all I have. Check the description for more uh, important information. And please support the developers of this game. And, and give warm regards to the family uh, who's a part of this. I believe it's the Green family. So anyway, I'll leave with that. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Thank you for sticking with me through this way too long video. And thank you for everyone pushing me to play it because I, I did want to play it, but I may have been putting it off a little bit because I didn't know if I wanted to go through it. But I'm really, I really am glad that I played this game. I really am. So thank you everybody so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.